All right. Greetings to you once again, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus. I greet you in that name that is above every other name, at the name of Jesus Christ. Every knee does bow, every tongue confesses, because he, the Lord Jesus Christ, is Lord. And, um, you know, we are grateful for all the many blessings that he puts in our lives. We're grateful that um, in him we live and move and have our being. And we're grateful that um, he's called us by his name, for his purposes, for his plan, for his good pleasure. So now, as we continue to walk out our life on the earth at such a time as this, we continue to also wonder and question and ask and, and look and seek and um, the, the perpetual thing in front of us is, okay, Lord, this day, um, give us this day our daily bread. Give us also this day um, our daily actions, our daily prayers, our, the things that you would have us to do. We live in this state of connection and of the state of actual communion with the Spirit of God because that is the plan and the purpose for his people at such a time as this. You know, you want to be in a state where <clears throat> you trust him. You know that he's leading you and guiding you, and you also are um, allowing him to unfold things in front of you. You know, the, the situations of this life can change so rapidly, so rapidly. And this is where God wants his people to flow with him. You know, when you flow with the Spirit of God, what happens? We, so the scriptures talk about us being like the wind. Uh, in John chapter 3, when Nicodemus was having a, a discussion with Jesus and trying to figure this out. Because why? Because Nicodemus had a worldview and a religious upbringing that had trapped him into a certain mindset that did not allow for him to, to reconcile that which he knew which that which was true. <laughs> so I'll say that again. Um, he, he had trouble reconciling that which he knew with that which was true. See, when Jesus came on the scene, the one thing that, that they all knew within themselves was that what Jesus said and did and who he was, was truth. And it created, in those especially that were a lie, it created a visceral reaction it created a, his presence created a, um, a, just a completely toxic response. And rather than repent, which is what you should do, which is what the appropriate response is when somebody comes into contact with truth um, and they, they have any semblance of good in them, is to repent and to get right and to align yourself with truth. Rather, what happened was they knew that he was true. They knew that they were fakes. They were frauds. They were imposters. They were usurpers. They were those that were trying to steal that which was um, not their own, <clears throat> trying to enslave those that did not know. So they. So what did they do? They wanted to blot out and destroy and to kill and to shame, and to marginalize, and to chase around from city to city the truth to get rid of it, so that they could keep people in the lie. Now, Nicodemus, who was somebody that he did love God, and he did want the truth, but with Nicodemus, the struggle that he had was that there was he had the difficulty reconciling that which he knew, which that which was true. And he also was trying to balance things with the social constraints of, you know, being a, a leader among the people and being a leader in certain circles. So he was trying to balance the social constraints. Um, so that's why he came to Jesus at night, you know, because he didn't want to take the scrutiny that would come to him if he overtly supported Jesus and asked these questions in front of everybody else. So, And he was trying to wrestle it out within himself. But what he did know was the reality of the fact that Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life. He knew that. He knew that there was that there. That's why he had to come to him at night. That's what he had to talk to. That's why he had to try to reconcile. And he said, look... I know, I you know, I know that that you got something here because nobody could do the things that that you do unless God was with them. Nobody, listen, brothers and sisters in Christ, nobody can do the things that you do unless God was with you. Nobody. 
Nobody can walk out the lives that we live unless God is with us. Nobody can survive the onslaught of the enemy unless God is with you. Nobody can have the wisdom and knowledge and understanding that comes to a child of the living God when they walk with him unless God is with them. So they recognize when they see a child of God, they recognize that God is with us. And Nicodemus, struggling with that reconciliation, said, how can these things be? Now, Jesus you know, then put the record uh, back to him and said, well, you know, if you're, you're a teacher and yet you don't understand even the simplest of things, you don't understand even the introduction, introduction of these things. And yet you're trying to teach the people. <clears throat> and he described, Jesus then described us too. And he said, you know, the, the children of God, they're, they're like the wind. You know, they flow with the Spirit. They, they go where the Spirit leads them. Now, you can't control the wind. You can see the effects of the wind. You can't control it. But it's there. It does what it does. And that's the way the children of God are. See, the fact that we, as children of God, um, <clears throat> are willing to flow with the quickening of the Holy Spirit in time, in that very moment, as because God is I am, so you are I am, You are in that place because you've now become one with the vine. You know, John 15, you know, he is the vine, we're the branches. So, so we are engrafted into him. So there's no separation now. So you are now I am in that you are one with him. You are consummated with him. So now you become present and in becoming present, you also become eternal because there is no time. You know, the, the, the physics of this world now is breaking down. The um, the uh, as the as knowledge is increasing, as Daniel talked about in Daniel chapter twelve, and many are going to and fro on the earth, which absolutely is a sign of the time that we live in right now. So the scriptures have been bore out to be correct once again. Um, you know, even despite the effects um, with the Mandela effects and those kind of things of of just people trying to mess around with with um with base reality. And there's a reason for that too, because uh, our, our reality is actually becoming more fluid as things are, are cracking up. And as, as we're going into a time where everything is being shaken, that can be shaken. Um, you know, and as, as the worlders do certain things because they think it's going to be expedient for their own agenda, but as God is allowing for certain things to happen and take place in the larger picture, <clears throat> because just like with Pilate, when Jesus stood before Pilate and he and Pilate said, you know, don't you know that I can do this and that to you? Don't you know that I got the power to crucify you, the power to let you go? And what did Jesus say? He said, you would have no power to do this unless it was even given to you by the Father. So the one that handed me over to you is guilty of the greater sin. And Pilate, <clears throat> you know, the, the Jesus set the record straight. The people in the world think that they are controlling, think that they are calling the shots, think that they're doing certain things. And what God says is you wouldn't even have your position unless it served God's purpose. And God knows that you've got that position. In fact, he's allowed you to have that position because you, evil one in that position, even serve a purpose in that you, by your opposition to the truth, will end up resulting in the glorification of God and the glorification of his plan and purpose on the earth by that which you've done. Case in point, Pharaoh and Moses. Pharaoh's harsh stance against the people of God. Pharaoh's uh, obstinance. Pharaoh's um, just complete, uh, just continue to break his word, uh, lie, go back on the things that he said he would do, all of that. So Pharaoh, in that configuration, what was the result of it? Well, one, he was completely destroyed. Uh, he, the nation that he, so he held up, his nation, was destroyed under his leadership. And it came down to bear on even his own life. And in his own life, his firstborn was struck down. You know, because of him and his own foolishness and his own uh, <clears throat> arrogance, to think that he could exalt himself against that which God was doing. God used Pharaoh 
and that situation to glorify himself and to give us an object lesson of his power in being able to liberate and deliver his people with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. So God sent a couple guys in, you know, (laughs) Moses and Aaron, and Moses has a stick. And that's how everything kicks off. Because it's God that does the work. Listen, brothers and sisters, God is the one that does the work, not you and not me. We, what we do, yeah, we have works that we do, but God is the one that does the work. One man plants, another man waters, but God causes it to grow. You do the thing that God gives you to do, but realize that the result is in God's hands. You do the part that God has for you to play and realize that the result is going to be what he carries out, what he executes. You understand? So <clears throat> we shift into... You, you know what? You, you do know this. You already understand this. You already have the witness when you're, within your spirit. Sometimes what happens is what, what needs to happen is just for the sake of your own confidence and assurance, um, you need to have this reinforced. And God has some voices out there that do that. But you got to know within yourself that God has already spoken these things to you. And he does these little things like these talks to confirm and to affirm so that you can move forward in confidence. You've got to move forward in confidence. You need to move forward in, because that's, that's your faith. Your faith is that assurance of what you hope for, of the things not seen. Well, you, okay, you, you, yeah, you are assured. You're assured within yourself of that which God has put forward, and you know that he's doing that. So, <clears throat> yes, we're like the wind, and God has put that um, in front of the whole world, and this is part of also the revealing of the sons and daughters of the living God. So the whole creation groans in eager expectation for the revelation of the true sons of the living God. So that is going on, as, and God is revealing them. And how is he revealing them? Well, you'll know a tree by its fruit. You know, you're going to know um, the children of God by, <clears throat> they're going to be revealed. They're being revealed even in this time. You know what? Uh, um, It is in the situations of life that you really, truly see who you are and where you're at. You know, it's it's in the trial, it's in the tribulation, that that's where you get an understanding of, do do you trust God or do you trust man? Do you look to God for your salvation or do you look to man for your salvation? Where do you go in that first moment? When something comes up, do you bring it before the Father and take it to Him? Because He's already given you that option. You know, be anxious about nothing, but in all things with prayer and supplication, make your request known unto God. You know, you can, you can, you can, you know, take His yoke upon you, for His yoke is easy and His burden is light. You know, do you look to, do you look to Him? Or do you look to, um, do you look to man? Do you look to man to save you? Do you look to man to to uh, do you look to man to take care of you? Do you look to man to provide you that salvation? <clears throat> so, you know that's the way the world is. You know, ultimately, when things come into the crunch, what's going to happen is that the children of God will look to the Father, and those of the world will look to the world. And the difference will be that the Father saves his people and the world does not. Because the world has no salvation. It has no ability to save anything. In fact, the entire world system is there to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's the very nature and the design of the system. You've got to know that. And if you know that, if you understand that, then you can actually deal with the reality of your situation. If you think that it's something else, then you're going to be sorely disappointed. You know, there is no peace in the world. There is no salvation in the world. There is no restoration in the world. You know, there's just sorrow and there's misery. And the other thing, too, that's happening is, is their whole thing is coming apart. And as the whole system of the world comes apart, 
uh, it gets more and more and more. Um, they lose their mind. They, they, it just gets more difficult because men's hearts will fail them when they see the things that are coming upon the earth. Now you, child of the living God, for at the same time that men's hearts will fail them, well, what does the scriptures give you? Don't worry about anything. You know, the scriptures has talked to us about that. You know, don't, don't worry. You know, um, consider the birds. You know, they don't, uh, you know, they don't store in barns. This is Matthew 6. They don't store in barns, but God feeds them. You know, consider the lilies of the field that, you know, even Solomon in all his, his splendor was not clothed like one of these. So recognize that. Recognize that, you know, that you don't need to worry about tomorrow. For sufficient for the day is the evil thereof. But also this is all coming back to bringing us into the present. Bringing you into the moment. Bringing you into the situation that you're in right now. And trusting the Father. And knowing that He's in control. And being in that place of connection. And allowing for in this moment. To do the thing that the Father gives you to do. To say the words the Father gives you to say. Because you know in such a short window. Things can change. Good and bad. you got to understand that. And sometimes seemingly good and sometimes seemingly bad but as time goes on uh, you know you don't know you don't know what something actually is going to truly be in the outcome of a particular course of action um, you know there's there's a lot of uh, you know stories of wisdom and and uh, parables and and uh, um, that that kind of allude to that there's one um, there's one story that's out there about, you know, the, the farmer, you know, who, um, you know, who his, his, uh, <clears throat> he's on his farm and then the horse runs away and everybody says, oh, oh, that's so unlucky. So unfortunately he says, well, you know, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. We don't know whether it's good or bad. Next day, the horse comes back with 12 other horses and then the 12 other horses that come back, everybody's like, oh, wow, you're so lucky. You, you got all these new horses. He said, well, it's to be seen if, if this is good or bad. Um, and then <clears throat> the son goes and tries to start training one of the horses and falls off the horse and, and breaks his breaks his leg. And then the uh, everybody's like, oh my gosh, that's so unfortunate. And he says, well, it's to be seen whether it's good or bad. Uh, then the next day, the, the king's army comes through looking for every able-bodied young man to take them off to serve in the war. And because the son is... Uh, is um, the son is uh, injured, he gets a pass, and they don't take him off to war to fight that war. And then everybody's like, oh my gosh, you're so lucky that you know he didn't have to go and fight this war because he probably would have died there. You would have lost your son. So, it says, <clears throat> so it's like, even with that, it's to be seen. It's, it's you know, the, there's a, that's just a, you know, kind of one of hundreds of, of, uh, of stories that are, are out there that sort of just hint at a certain principle, which is sometimes we don't necessarily see or know or understand because we don't see the entirety of a situation, nor do we see the entirety of how something may unfold. And so in the process of us living our life, you know, you've got to, now this is where it comes through the filter then of somebody who follows Jesus Christ. You've got to see it in the way that the Spirit of God would have you. So, so Consider it pure joy when you face trials and tribulations of all kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith builds perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope, and that hope does not disappoint. So that's one. You know, you, you've got to see it <clears throat> to know that God causes all things, Romans 8, 28, all things to work for the good of the called according to his purpose. You know, like he is working that out. So, so sometimes what happens is, is, as we have the human nature, the flesh nature, which wants to avoid pain and seek pleasure. We've got the flesh nature that looks for comfort and tries to avoid all hardship. Uh, we've got the flesh nature that will, um, if let run amok and not brought, brought under some sort of discipline and not brought under some sort of subjection, will, will, um, will kill, kill you. You know, <laughs> you let your flesh and your, your carnal nature just go full bore with no, with no, um, <clears throat> no clamps on that. No, sub, not bringing it under any sort of subjection, and y you will, you will ruin yourself so fast, make your head your head spin. And we've seen that. 
you know. So, um, in my flesh dwells no good thing. There's a reason the scriptures talk about that. Because the flesh nature, the carnal nature, the fallen nature, is uh, at enmity with your spirit. And you have to bring that under subjection so that you can walk out the plan and purpose of God within you. So that you can walk out the um, that which is the work of the spirit and the work of the spirit in you. So, um, that is course of action for us. So when Nicodemus was coming to Jesus, we, brothers and sisters, will remain a mystery to this world and this world system. And, um, but we are here for a purpose. Now, we are, in fact, um, you know, we're a different, we're different to the world. We're, we're a different species. You know, we are, because, you know, the wheat and the tares grow together. And God has talked about this, you know, the, that, that, because, the, and there are a whole different set of people walking around on this earth than you. Now, they look similar on the surface, you know, because they have eyes and ears and hair and a mouth and, and they walk and they talk and they speak in similar languages, but they're different species. They're different. You know, there are, Proverbs talk about, you know, there's people that they cannot sleep unless they call somebody to, cause somebody to fall. You know, that's not you. You know, there are a set of people that are human agents <clears throat> tied in with the devil. And, you know, that's what they do. That's what they, 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 they relish that. You know, they, they give themselves over to that. They run towards that. Now, there are some prodigals. There are some brothers and sisters in Christ that maybe have drifted over, you know, and are being used to feed the pigs in a foreign and strange place. But those are, but that's different. And in God's time, those ones do come to themselves. But you don't want to be stuck in no man's land. Listen, if you're in a bad spot, if you are, if you've been in that place and you are flirting with the world, just know this. Uh, the world is not your friend. And you're going, they're just going to, extract every resource out of you, drain you dry, and stick you in uh, the most dismal, demeaning situation you possibly can be in, and leave you there to die. You know, that's what they're going to do to you. So wake up, just like the prodigal did, and realize that, you know, in your father's house, there's more than enough to... To, for you to have an amazing life, a good life, if nothing else. But you gotta, you gotta take a step towards Him. And you know, the thing is, is that I think a big part of it too is that we just, you know, people have been so beaten down with the programming of the world that they have that hard time trusting. They have that hard time trusting that will God really take care of you? Will God really watch out for you? Will He really come to bat for you when, when things get tough? And that's where faith comes in, because faith is that certainty. And you know within yourself that yes, He will. You know, yes, He does. And you see it in the moment. So right now, where you are, this moment, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. This moment, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And out of the overflow of that, love your neighbor as yourself. In this moment, <clears throat> um, seek first the kingdom. Yeah, just put that first and let God uh, lead and guide. And know that as he does that, you know, you're going to see the effects of it in your life. You're going to see the uh, repercussions, the positive repercussions of that in your life. You know, I had a, <clears throat> a friend of mine, uh, one time we were talking and... and uh, and uh, he, he was telling me something. He said, he said, you know, Govind, he said, you can choose to do whatever you want. You just can't choose the consequences. And I found that to be absolutely true. You know, everybody always is, is wanting to, um, to talk about their rights, to choose this and to choose that and to do this and to do that. Uh, you know, you've been created as a free will human agent on the earth. You can choose to do whatever you want. Now, you just can't choose the consequences. You cannot choose... The, re the, the, um, the reactions, the responses 
for the things that you do. But, uh, yeah, you can do it. You know, you can do it. And, but here's the thing, when you, you're going to reap what you sow. So this is why, for the child of God, you're, the more that you choose to do good things, the more that you choose to do life-affirming things, the more that you choose to do that which is um, in line with God's word and instruction, then the likelihood that the consequences that will be in your life will be good, will be positive, will be helpful, will be um, a blessing, is very high. Now, yeah, sometimes you know, there's that situation, you know, bad things happening to good people. Um, but even with that, you know, back to the story from earlier, you have to give it some time and let's see. You know, and if you trust God, there, there may be a blessing in that if you just let it be for a while and just continue to trust and just continue to hold on and just continue to know that he's in control. So let's see. Um, <clears throat> but at the same time, um, what you also know too is the wages of sin is death. What you know too is that every time that you do something against that which God has put in his revealed will, that something dies. Something dies. Every time that we sin, something dies. That's just the way it is. You know, it can be, it can be a lot of things. You know, it doesn't just have to be life. It can be your dreams. It can be your hopes. It can be your vision. Something dies. You know, it can be a relationship, a God-given relationship. That something dies. You know, when you and I choose to go in another direction, something dies. So repent and get right. And go with Him. And and the going with Him is to be led by the Spirit. To hear. You need that no man should teach you, for the Holy Spirit will teach you when He comes upon you. That's what the Scriptures has given us. And what does the world try to do? Nope. They want, they want to make sure that you do not uh, go that way, because now you can't be controlled. So now they need to put an intermediary between you and God which was the curse of the law. The curse of the law was that you needed a man to get to God. That's the way that it was back in the old days. Okay, so the old days, um, <clears throat> before the rede redeeming work of Christ was complete on the cross, in the old days, the way that it worked was there was a high priest that went um, you know, once a year into the Holy of Holies to offer uh, the blood of an animal for the forgiveness and the, the, the forgiveness of the sins of the people, and so he was that intermediary, and he would go in, and they actually had to have bells tied on the fringes of his garments and a rope tied on his ankle, because if he went in to the Holy of Holies and displeased God or something was up there, he could drop dead inside there, and nobody could go in after him, so they would have to pull him out by his ankle, and because nobody could go in to try to... Um, uh, to try to um, go get him. That was the, the old way that it was. Because God is holy. Now, move forward to Christ. Well, now, in Christ Jesus, you live and move and have your being. In Christ Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith, the beginning and the end, where you live in that spiritual position, where you're in the vine, you're in between there, you're in him. Right? Okay. Now, what happened when Jesus was on the cross? It is finished. And what happened to the veil of the temple? It was rent in two from top to bottom. This uh, veil that was um, just, I, I mean, it, it was, it was, th so I had somebody that was, had done a study on the veil and he was showing me, he had these Persian rugs in his house and he showed me a two inch hand knitted, hand like knotted, Persian rug, and he just said, just pick this up and just try to pull on it. And that thing was, you might as well be pulling on a steel beam. And he said, could you, could you rip this? Could you tear this? Said, no, not, not a chance. The strongest, strongest people in the world that I know could not begin to tear that because of just the strength of that. He said that the, and he then told me that the veil of the temple was four inches thick compared to that rug. Just to help me to get some perspective on that. God reached down from heaven and ripped it from top to bottom to open it up and expose the Holy of Holies. 
you know, not that was open and accessible. And Jesus Christ said, it is finished. The price had been paid now for you and I to go direct to him. For you and I, now there is no more uh, sacrifice that needs to be made because the sacrifice has been made. So that you have a direct access to him. And in the process of having direct access to him, you need that no man should teach you because the Holy Spirit will teach you when he comes upon you. So now you have that access and you have that message and you have that word and you have that quickening of the Holy Spirit and you're able to move forward in that. And what the world will try to do is they'll try to tell you exactly the opposite. No, you don't. That's what they're going to try to do. They're going to try to tell you, no, you don't. You can't. You shouldn't. Don't trust that. Come back into your prison cell and sit down like a good little boy, like a good little girl, and wait to die. That's not your future. And that's not who you are today. So you, brother, sister of the living God, you are a child of the Most High. You are a prince. You are a princess. You are here with the all the resources of heaven, you know, at your, that it's there for you. But you got to move into it. Jesus accessed the resources of heaven in his time on the earth. And there was much more that he could have accessed than he didn't. What did he say to Peter? You know, he said, look, if I want to, I can call 12 legions of angels right now. And they'll get me out of the situation. When he was in, in uh, Gethsemane and, and they were betraying him at the time. <clears throat> the betrayal was taking place, at, rather, I should say, that was being orchestrated by Judas. But he said, how then would the would, would what God has intended, how then would that be fulfilled? So Jesus had access to a whole lot more. But he was meek. So, oh, there's a difference between, and we talked about this before, the difference between meekness and weakness. Uh, weak is when you have no power. Meek, with the M, M-E-E-K, is, is power under control. So you have tremendous power, but it's under control. It's under the control of the Holy Spirit. When you're meek, the power is there, but you use it as being led by the Spirit of God. You, child of the living God, you have more power in you than a billion suns. You, know, you have more in you, the most incredible resources of the entire um, universe are in you. That's why the world wants to, to extract those. But here's the thing. They need to engage your free will. So now it's back to that. They need you to make that decision to go with the world. And God, who the many are called, the chosen are few, he also extends that to you and says, okay, will you follow me? So that is um, part and parcel of our walk and our time here. <clears throat> That is part and parcel of um, God's plan and purpose for us to be here. So, you know, you need to walk this thing out and you need to trust him. And you need to know that he's in control and you need to know that, that he's, he's got this and he's got you. And a small shift in our approach makes a big difference in the way that we live. You know, look at, look at, look at animals, <clears throat> you know, when they're in their, in the zone in their natural situation, in their natural habitat. You know, they are, you know, they, they don't stress and they don't worry. Now, a lot of times they would, the place that now if something comes up, an incident comes up, they deal with it. And then they go back to being in that state of just being what they are in that moment. The time usually that animals get stressed actually is when they have to deal with humans. Because we have a way of putting a lot of things under stress and distress. Uh, the fallen situation, which needs to be righted. That needs to be righted too. You know, God will destroy those that destroy the earth. You know, he is mindful of all those that are using and exploiting his creation. All of that stuff is going to be adjudicated. All of this stuff is on the horizon. All of it. All of it. We're riding the wave. 
is God gave us um, some instructions, you know, and those are based on certain things that He told us a long time ago, and then gave us liberty to start talking about. That's another thing too. You, you got to also know that there's times where God will show you things, but then there's times where now you'll say, "Now is the time." Even with Daniel, you know, it was, you know, it was like he had a lot of questions, and God said, "Look, this is for, this is for, um, you know." going to be for the end that's that's what this is what i'm showing you uh you know a lot of the people john as well on the island of patmos there's a lot of things that have been put there that are now being unwrapped and unfolded you got to know that you got to know that that there are things there's god's timing you know god is is i am at the same time we are in a um, in a certain configuration while we're here. So you need to be an eternal being, and being eternal, then you need to navigate in and through time. Jesus did it. He was the best at it ever. And we do that as we shift from the way the world does things to the way that God does things. So move in that. Trust Him. Um, this is this is part of your discipline for the day, part of your activity for the day, part of your your way that you conduct yourself this day. Know that God is in control. Know that hey, there's people out there that love you, and uh, we pray for you, and we'll pray for you right now. Father God, in Jesus' name, <clears throat> pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray, Lord, that you bless them, keep them, watch over them, Lord God, strengthen them in the truth and in the knowledge of you, Lord. We bless the work of all of our hands. We bless the thoughts of the meditations of all of our minds and all of our hearts. Father, we bless, Lord, in Jesus' name, those that are yours. And we pray for the empowering of your Holy Spirit upon all of our lives. Quicken us and lead us and guide us in your will this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, we love you guys. Drop us an email, faithmix at gmail.com. Say hi. And... um yeah, so, um, and okay, also too, <clears throat> just a little housekeeping. So Spreaker is where we're going to be doing a lot of uh, the pods. We'll do some live, we'll do some regular broadcasts, but you can go to faithmix.com and if you want to download the audios, you can get them from there. Uh, we'll probably have a smaller file format there just because that's kind of the long-standing archive just in case ever Spreaker gets weird, just know that faithmix.com is the landing page for you. So, um, yep, and uh, we've got Twitter going, we have that Facebook page going, and um, and actually, this post to YouTube, so that's kind of cool too. So, all of this is going to get going a little bit, and, um, you know, so if this blesses you and if it helps you, well, that's awesome. So, God bless you, and we'll catch up with you again sometime soon. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.